So I was listening to this um, gentleman, what he was saying about the royal family and about Meghan and about Harry's wife and listening to it and telling me what he said. This woman is lighter skinned than Drake and they still were concerned about how dark their baby was going to be. Like, how racist do you have to be? But then again, that's a stupid question because this guy, the guy who called some of his comrades ragheads, is the least racist member of the family. I stood in the middle of the room and pressed the bell and the doors opened and there was a grandma. What? You know, he had short body, long arms. <laughs> and I had the most appalling couple. No worries. I'm sure they actually just let a gorilla into Buckingham Palace and it wasn't a black man. Boy, you guys are shocked that there's racists in the royal family. Wait till you find out where they made their money. <laughs> oh boy. In fact, let's define racism. What is a racist? Someone who is racially prejudiced and believes themselves superior on grounds of their race. Something that you're born as and did not earn. A royal is born royal and does not earn their title and they do see themselves as inherently superior to other people. Do you really think it a far stretch that these guys might not have the most uh, adapted views about race? I mean, think about it. They used to own people. How can you refer to a group of nations as a common wealth? It's not your wealth, it's people's land. Is it really shocking that a family like this might need to be clued up a bit on race relations? Why is it shocking? Are we just gonna pretend that we don't know the history of the monarchy? I mean, ah, this woman come out and said, oh, maybe it was casually racist. The only person who finds casual racism casual is the person being racist. Okay, this is casual racism. I'm allowed four of those a day, you know, and maybe a cheeky nignog after. What do we need to show you to prove that racism is a problem in this country? You could be getting lynched in England by the new KKK, but no, 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 it just looks like a, some form of bohemian yoga. Oh, but they're lighting fires. Yes, it's quite chilly these days. You know what the weather's like. I mean, it's not like over the years, the media has not created a toxic society full of Islamophobia and anti-black racism and anti-Asian racism. It's not like our politics in this country have been driven by racist media moguls who are bent on distracting the lower classes with racism so they don't realize that they're being screwed and money's being embezzled. No, 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 absolutely not. The UK is not bigoted, the UK press is bigoted, specifically yeah. the tabloids. But unfortunately, if the source of information is inherently corrupt or, or racist or bias, then that filters out to the rest of society. It's stating the obvious, but the media's job is to keep power in place. They're not here to help the underdog. They're here to perpetuate the power structure that we have. They're here to keep us believing that we need to have dated, archaic class systems functioning here in the UK. And Harry did say, in his own words, there's an invisible contract behind closed doors between the institution and the tabloids. The biggest trick they've pulled is convincing the poor man that somehow this benefits them. It absolutely does not. You are not gaining from this at all. We have had people commit suicide because of these media-led witch hunts. At what point do the tabloid newspapers start to get held responsible for the things that they do and say? Princess Diana was not that long ago. Nothing's changed. I was not aware of how overwhelming that attention would become, nor the extent to which it would affect both my public duties and my personal life. When are we going to learn? The people that chased her through the, into the tunnel were the same people that were taking photographs of her while she was still dying on the back seat of the car. Seeing the damage that was done, knowing how bad things can get, gave Harry the wisdom and the strength to do what he's done. And I think also Meghan has shown remarkable strength and she's been a good example to a lot of women and showing them that it is possible to escape a toxic situation. Because it doesn't matter how much money you have, a toxic situation is still a toxic situation. I don't know how they could expect that after all of this time, we would still just be silent if there is an active role that the firm is playing in perpetuating falsehoods about us. If Megan could speak out against a royal family, if Meghan could find the strength to mobilize and leave and run away from royalty, then I think that should be some hope to a lot of our sisters, aunties, whoever, who are in abusive situations right now, 
and don't have the strength to leave. For that, I think we have to give respect where respect is due. There is one thing though, that, uh, a very, very questionable choice of places to run away and escape racism. They've gone to America. Yeah, that America. They've gone and pledged allegiance to a new queen, Oprah Winfrey. They're now under her protectorate. This is a huge slap to the face of the, the concept of the British monarchy. They've literally been abandoned for the celebrity life and the American monarchy, if you will. Kardashian, selfies, Netflix specials. I really think people are worrying too much about those two. I think they'll be fine. Imagine what life is like for people who don't have 36 million to fall back on. People who don't have the funds to just run away in America and live in Tyler Perry's house. Imagine what life is like for those people. Let's look at Meghan's situation and think, wow, if she, a woman married to a prince, suffers racism in England, then what does it feel like to be a boy on an estate in Peckham? We have the pinnacle of anti-racist politics. I think it's fantastic, I'm sure. Widows in Afghanistan, black and brown women around the world look up to Prince Harry and think, oh, Habibi, oh, <laughs> you champion, you know, go on fighting racism for your wife who has never been stopped and searched before. The big breakthrough in anti-blackness and in fighting racism is, you know, a prince. I'm sorry, but we're not looking to these people. Fred Hampton would not be telling us that right now the cure for our ailment is former white aristocracy. Lie! A revolutionary. In the next couple of hours, young men are probably being stopped and searched as we speak for no goddamn reason. I'm sure they're all thinking, wait till Harry and Meghan hear about this fam. They will say, watch bro. I'm gonna get Harry and Meghan. My man overseas, but man's gonna deal with you, you know. You must feel like I'm against you, Harry, but I'm not. What this man has done is a great example to fathers and brothers and husbands in my community, hell in every community, to stand up against injustice lose your privilege to a certain degree even if it means walking away with only 36 million yeah this man <laughs> no but seriously many women right now have mental problems or have ptsd have depression and all sorts because of the mother-in-law because of the father-in-law because of the extended family and this guy saw that he could not change what was going on so he said you know what I'm going to take us out of this situation. So let's all tip our hats to the prince. It takes a strong man to walk away from a situation like that. With only 36 million. <laughs> In the era where there are no second chances and people get canceled and, you know, for a guy who's been raised in a family where some people are referred to as gorillas and there are questionable opinions on race. He's gone from that to taking a stand and leaving and, and risking his own reputation and so on and that he has come a long way and this should be a lesson to all of us on social media including me. You know people can change. In the face of all this controversy and all this hate, Harry and Meghan love each other. In a world where people spend more time looking for reasons to hate, looking for reasons to harm, these two flew to another country, they'd left behind the life that they'd built together, all because they love each other. That is something quite beautiful. Love has transcended race, class, finances, and it's a good lesson to us all, you know, that a prince would marry an aesthetically pleasing celebrity that al almost could pass for black ish a lowly actor from hollywood who's been on tv shows and and you know is is not bad looking was attractive to a young man who just happened to be a prince and despite her humble beginnings he still saw fit to make her his wife you know and uh, i think that that's a beautiful thing of wins guys Real journalism based on facts is becoming a rarity these days. So we promise we will not troll any princesses. <laughs> you know, we will troll any princesses or drive anyone to suicidal thoughts. Um, you know, as long as you guys contribute, support Double Down News on Patreon.